welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the last video in my houseplant tour summer 2022 series. If you haven't watched all of the rest of them, go down below in the comments after this video so you can see all of the plants in the rest of my flat. So far I've taken you through my living room. The Ikea cabinet. And the office. And today I'm going to be showing you what's in my bedroom. I actually have a surprising number of plants in here. Uh, you can already see quite a lot and this is just a tiny bit of the bedroom. So I'm really excited to share with you everything that is in here. If you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. Right, let's get into the bedroom tour. So this is the bedroom featuring a little Cleo on the bed right now. She likes to hang out here in the mornings. To be honest, I have tidied up for this video. Usually I've got like loads of stuff on the floor over there, but I wanted to make this clean and it was a good excuse to clear the flat because we need to do it anyway. So here we go. This is, this is the bedroom. First off, on my bedside table, I've got an Alocasia gagiana, and it's actually doing really well. For the longest time, this plant had spider mites, and so I was dealing with that, but I think I've got rid of them now. It did used to have these like really huge leaves, which I absolutely loved, and that's kind of why I got it, but it's grown a lot smaller since. This is a new leaf that's popped out, and I'm hoping, like it's not hardened off yet, so maybe it'll get to like this size but I'd love to grow it a little bit bigger. It doesn't get the most light. Again, this is a southwest room, but it, like, it's got one really big window, and because we don't get that much sun in the UK, it doesn't get all that much sun. In the winter months, it might get a little bit of afternoon sun, like because the sun's a lot lower, but especially in the summer when the sun is higher, it's not getting much at all. Got a couple of shelves above the bed with some trailing plants on here. I try and keep plants on here that don't need as much attention just because uh, it's a little bit harder to care for them and they're not getting any grow light or anything. So I've got my Monstera Adansonii. It almost looks like it's not even in the pot. It's just trailing down all the way. Um, I think I need to cut that runner actually because I like it when it's a little bit bushier like this, but it's doing actually really well for me basically setting it and forgetting it. Um, so kind of this whole area is my set and forget zone. So up here I actually have, kind of have two plants that are like the same but different. I have my Philodendron Brazil and then my Global Green Pothos. And they both kind of have very similar colorings. Sort of dark on the outside, light in the middle. But this one's doing really well. I've grown this one from cuttings I'm pretty sure. It's gotten like quite yellow, almost lemon limey at the bottom. Which is pretty good. I didn't expect it to because it's not getting the most light in the world. But I think it's growing really well. I'm tempted to put it on a pole or something to let it climb instead. But I don't know. I really like how it's trailing in the minute. So I'm probably going to leave it. This global green is very, very small. I think this is my smallest pothos at the minute. I like how subtle the variegation is in the leaves. It's just so similar to the Brazil. It's quite funny. I've never thought about that until now but they're like the same, but different. Um, but I really, really, really like it. And it's just a good sturdy pothos. They're not as popular here in the UK. I've only seen them like more recently in my plant growing journey. Maybe that's just me being like unobservant, but I think they're fairly new for the UK pothos scene. Up here, we've got a bit of a sideways plant. <laughs> I think it's trying to grow towards the window. I might have to shift it to a slightly brighter spot because it's obviously not getting the light that it desires. I put this elmer up here recently because I was just doing a big shift around, but I, I might need to move it somewhere a bit brighter because it's not getting enough and it's like leaning towards the light. But this is my Alocasia poly that I like grew from bulbs. I grew this from like 
essentially nothing. Um, if you want to watch my video on how I grew it, you should. I think it's very fun to grow alocasias from bulbs or corms. It's just, it's such a problem process because you're basically growing something from what feels like nothing, or like what feels like a wood chip, but it's not. It's like a little, it's a little bulb for these things to grow. And so I think this is the most recent leaf. I think it's just popped it out actually. You can see it's a little bit shinier, but it's just growing so, so well. It's like, I think two thirds the size of the mother plant at this point, and that's with neither of them having um, the perfect light conditions. So I'm very, very happy with that. Beside this um, very artistic portrait of Joe and I, that's like our album cover, <laughs> um, I have a Pothos Enjoy. This is, I'm pretty sure my favorite Pothos, my favorite Epipremnum Aurum. Sorry, it's focusing on Joe's face instead of the plant. Um, <laughs> But I absolutely love this one so much. It was a bit longer, but I gave Claire a cutting recently. I think the variegation on it makes it look like it's a really expensive plant, but they're, they're so common, they're so easy to prop, and just such easy going, like don't need much plants. Again, I set this one and forget it. It's just such a simple, easy staple, and I think it looks really good where it is on the shelf. On the other side of that picture, we've got three plants over here. This is my philodendron birkin, which to be honest, I can almost take or leave at this point. I feel, oh gosh, there's um, fungus gnats around, so sorry. Um, I'm working on that problem. Like, I think it's pretty. It's a gorgeous plant, but I think I'm just a bit over it right now. I used to really, really love this philodendron, and it probably used to be my favorite philodendron before I got like into philodendrons but now I'm just kind of not in love with it. Maybe this will be another one that I get rid of in my next cull. It's kind of being held up by a chopstick as well. It's not the most upright of plants, um, <laughs> but it's fine. Oh gosh, um, I'm very embarrassed about this one. I'm always embarrassed about showing my very sad spider plants. I don't do spider plants. I, I, I don't like them, they don't like me, we don't get on, and I don't know why. I give them all the care in the world, the same sort of care that I give to any other type of plant. I've tried watering lots, I've tried watering little, I've tried ignoring it completely, and yet it still dies on me. So I'm done. I think this is the last one I will ever have. I, I always keep trying them, I keep thinking, oh this is the time, I've like learned so much since last time. No, I, I'm done. I'm done with spider plants. We're, we're done. This, as soon as it dies, it's going in the bin and I'm never getting another one again. I know I said that last time, but this time I mean it. Over here I've got a very, very tiny string of spades. It's just got two little strands. I have some propping in the other room to hopefully go in here, but again that's just two little strands. But it's growing pretty well. I'm tempted. No, I'm not gonna do that. But I, I was gonna say I'm tempted to like just butterfly it and start over, but I don't actually want to do that. I want to try and see if I can grow it long and bushy at the same time and not just cut it back to nothing. But I think I can do it. I think I can make it happen. This big one is a fairly new addition to my collection. It is one that I got from House of Kojo in a fairly recent haul, but this is an Aglaenema White Lance, I believe. And it's got like the most amazing sort of silvery, variegation in them. I've not had an Aglaenema in ages. Um, I used to love mine, but I I don't know what I did with them. I must have sold them, but <laughs> to be honest, I'm very, very glad I have this one. I think it looks very nice up here. It's just a good bit of contrast. I think if this wasn't here... Yep, I already like that zone so much better. <laughs> And like you can see my embroidery back there, um, which is fun. On Joe's bedside table, I've got a Monstera Stendeliana on a moss pole. It's a bit dry. I'm trying to leave it to dry out before I go on holiday. I'm filming all of this before I'm going on my holiday in hopes that I can get it up while I'm out. Um, but it's doing really, really well. This is the one I repotted in my like big news, I'm going full time YouTube video. And it is, I think it's loving life since then. I think it's grown so much. It's very, very happy on the pole. And 
I'm liking it so much more now. For a long time, I really didn't like the way it looked. It wasn't growing right for me. I hadn't properly given it something to support it. I'd given it moss poles, but oh god, there's so many fungus gnats on this. I think they're living in the moss, which is gross. But I, I hadn't given it like enough support and I wasn't keeping the old pole hydrated because I think I had it on a self-watering pole before and a makeshift one before and it just wasn't, it wasn't right. But now it's on my favorite grow vertical moss poles and I love it and I think it's so much happier now. Next to it is a big plant, one of my bigger plants, a Raphidophora tetrasperma which is just growing like absolute crazy. I really need to put more moss into this pole because it is very high up here. It needs something more to climb. I'm not sure I'll do that before I go away because these are perfectly happy just like climbing on nothing almost. They'll climb, I swear, almost anything, which is amazing, but I want to give it the support I can. So maybe once I'm back from my holiday, I will put in some more moss and hopefully get it to grow more. But I'm just so proud of this one. It was so, so tiny when we moved in. And I feel like it's like doubled or tripled in size, which it makes me so proud and so happy. And I love this plant. I think this is one of my favorite common plants. I love it. I love this plant a lot. I think now I'm going to talk about the plants that I have trailing across my entire ceiling. It's like they've all met up, which is great. Right when I moved in, they were all disconnected. And now they finally started like meeting each other and giving this room like the most amazing jungle vibes. It's like... It was my goal when I found these, like, when we found the flat and we knew we wanted it and it had these sort of, like, bars on here. I was like, well, you know what? They're going to be covered in pothos because, one, those are easy to take care of and, two, it's going to look like a proper jungle and I'm going to love it. So, I have um, several pothos here. I've got a golden pothos, which... It's doing really well. This is the one that's closest to the window and gets the most like sort of warmer afternoon light, which I think it really likes. So I think it's probably the healthiest of the pothos I have on here. This side I have a marble queen and this one desperately needs a repot. I'm going to repot it I think fairly soon, but it is a bit of a mission because I have to take it off the wall to do that because it does need a slightly bigger pot. But it's, it's still very happy, um, and I think it might be a tiny bit thirsty. No, it's actually feeling pretty firm, so it's fine. But it did lose its variegation a little bit up here. Like when I chopped it, it just kind of went green, so I might have to chop it back again, maybe a bit further back, and hopefully it'll come out more marbled again. Next to that one, going up the other side of that wall, and on this big pillar, is my longest golden pothos. It is growing so well. It's gotten to the middle and I've started to like circle it back around as well. This one isn't getting quite as much light. The light it's getting comes from this grow light up here. So it is a lot more full on this side. This side's kind of just emptied out. But I'm hoping that this vine I can like trail along here and it'll just like chill by the grow light and really like it. And then on this side, the last one of my little viney ones, and to be honest, I don't know if it's my favorite up here, but I still really like it. I really wanted to have a satin pothos. This is the like classic, is it Argoreus? It might be pronounced. I always forget how to pronounce this, but it is growing pretty well. Its leaves aren't huge and it's gotten a bit leggy because it's trying to reach towards the light. But at the same time, it's not unhappy, and I still like the way it looks, but I think if I put a pothos up here, maybe another Marble Queen, it would do a little bit better. Just because of the situation and how much light it's getting. But I don't know where I would put this if I took it down, so it's gonna stay up for the time being. So over here, we've got some alcoves. I have two of these alcoves, and these are the ones that I use to test the Mother Grow Lights. And those worked so well. If you haven't seen my Mother Grow Lights video, you should go watch it because I basically did a test in this area because these plants get such low light in this space. Even though it's like by a window, it's like quite recessed. And so they're not getting that much light and the only light they're getting is basically from the grow light. And it's worked so, so well. And these plants are so happy. Let me, let me show you them. I'm so excited about them. So first off, we have my Philodendron White Princess. And this one is doing so well. 
it's basically started producing me almost a new leaf a week at this point which is amazing and all of the leaves have some insane variegation they just they look almost fake they're so beautiful and i'm so proud of them they're growing so well it's just on a pole and it's loving life on the pole it's all grown from this new growth point here i chopped it there when i put it on this pole and i wanted to like let it regrow and hopefully get a bit more mature in its growth and so far it's not matured tons but each leaf is bigger than the last and so I'm hoping I can get it to like properly mature very soon. I very recently put this Philodendron Berlamarks Variegata on a moss pole. It's definitely not grown into it yet. At the time of filming this I put it on two days ago so it's definitely not grown into it yet but I love this plant so much. I got it from Memo at another plant swap and it is growing so well. Let me see if I can show you how weird it grows. It's a bit hard to see because one of them is buried down in the soil, but at every point where a leaf comes out, it splits and it grows another new growth point, which I think is completely surreal. Like, I think this plant is just gonna get so freaking bushy at this point because every single growth point has two growth points and it's just, it's gonna become a tree before I know it and a gorgeous tree of like nice, variegated Berla Marks leaves. Ah, I'm so excited. My Philodendron Pink Princess is kind of getting lost in this space at the minute, but it is growing again so well. This is my now only Pink Princess because I ended up giving the other one away. I just, I, I didn't love it anymore and it just became too much of a project for me and not a good project, a project that I felt stressed about. So this is my only Pink Princess and I love it with all of my heart. It's got Look at that half moon leaf. It's gotten a little bit light bleached, but I think if I took it out of this high light, it might go back a little bit. But it's growing again, I'm pretty sure like a new leaf every maybe two weeks or so. So it's growing so fast. It's nearly at the top of its little pole I've got. It's very close to the grow light. I might need to be very careful with it while I'm away, but it's just, this is the newest leaf and it did get a bit funky when it came out of the sheath but that's all right i think it's just because the humidity is not the greatest here it says it's 67 but that's with the window closed and now that it's summer the windows open a good chunk of time um in theory i should probably put a humidifier over here to help these plants because they do like quite a lot of humidity but uh probably not gonna do that. In this corner, again, another fairly new plant. This is an Epiphremnum amplissimum silver stripe, and it's got literal silver stripes on its leaves, and I love it. I'd never really heard of amplissimums before, but I really, really like this one. It's just starting to produce some new growth for me since I got it. It is fairly new to my collection. I got it from House of Kojo as well but it just came on a quar pole. And I think it likes this spot. I think it likes it better when the grow light's on, which is for 12 hours a day, but it's growing pretty well. Nothing that, that fancy, just chilling out. I rarely ever show these shelves down here because they're not the prettiest in the world, but these shelves are getting grow light on them still. And I've got some really nice plants on them. So I've got my Skindapsis Trebi, which is kind of similar to the Exotica, but I feel like it's also very, very different. The sort of variegation pattern on the leaves, to me, feels nothing like the Exotica. And like, why is this leaf so skinny? I don't know. I think this is an absolute gorgeous plant. I love it so much. And it's, I don't know, I'm not gonna say one of my favorite Skinapsis, because it's not, but I just really like how full it is. And I literally set this one and forget it. I don't pay attention to this plant at all. And it's still growing amazingly. It's just vining down a little bit and it is getting grow light, which is good. And I think it really likes that, but it's just living its best life. Next to it, we have a pot of reverted Syngonium albos, um, AKA just a pure green Syngonium, which I think is quite nice. I didn't really like it when it was in the pot with the albos because it felt like it was lacking, but when it's on its own, I think it's really pretty. I love the shape of these leaves. They're like so quintessentially arrowhead shaped that it's, 
it's nice. It's, it's not my favourite plant in the world, but I really like it and it will stay. So this plant was also in my Ikea cabinet tour, but I have repotted it since I filmed that. Um, I didn't film all of these on the same day. I would be exhausted and my voice would be gone if I did that. But this is an Epipremnum pinnatum variegata and I've recently put it up into soil. It's got some decent growth on it. It's not the most variegated in the world, but mm, that leaf is very green. Mm, we'll see how it grows. Hopefully I can get it to grow more like this leaf in here because I really like the variegation on that leaf. But if it doesn't, that's also okay. I still think it's a pretty plant. At the bottom down here, I kind of have this plant in isolation because I'm not sure what's going on with it. This is a philodendron sotoroi quote-unquote variegata. It is a variegated sotoroi and I think it's absolutely stunning. These leaves are gorgeous, but at the same time I have heard that this variegation isn't real and it's actually a virus. You can kind of see it a little bit more on this leaf. It's a bit mutated, mutilated, I don't know, but I don't know if it's a virus. I'm currently working on trying to get a potential test for it to see if it is or not, but I'm, I'm very unsure. I'm keeping it as separate as possible from my other plants. It's not touching anything at the minute. I'm keeping it away from my skin dapsis because I don't want it to transfer any bad stuff if it is a virus. And I'm now gonna go wash my hands after I've touched it because I don't wanna transfer it to any other plants. I'm not sure if it is or not, but I'm just playing it safe for now until I can try and get it tested and see if it does have some sort of mosaic virus or something like that. I have four plants in the window here. Sorry if this is a little blown out. It's quite hard to film something with the background being so much brighter than the foreground, but I will pull all of these down to show you what they are and give them in a bit of a better lighting situation. This first one here is my Hoya polynera or fishtail Hoya because of its very fishtail looking leaves. I love this one so much I got it because it looks similar to my tattoo. Like the leaves on my tattoo look like the leaves in the polynera. And also, I just really like it in general. It does have like little bits of variegation on the leaves. Only on some of them, not on all of them. I was trying to get it to grow a bit more by putting it in a brighter spot in the window. But unfortunately, during the heat wave, it got a little bit burnt. I did remove a lot of the like heavily burnt leaves, the ones that just like fell off, I took off. And I should probably go through and prune these back a little bit further just because they're not happy and they don't look great, but I don't know, I'm just nervous to do that because what if what if they get more burnt? What if it stops protecting the other ones? Anyways, doesn't really matter. Um, while I'm away, I've pulled it back from the window and on any future days that it's like really, really hot, I'm going to pull them away from the window. I just wasn't at home during that heat wave and I totally blanked and didn't tell Joe to take them out from the window because I just didn't. And so it is suffering with a little bit of sunburn, but overall, I still think it's pretty happy. Like this backside here, <laughs> the part that's not facing the window that's facing my room looks really nice. So I'm happy with it. This one here is a Hoya curtsii. And I really, really, really do like this plant. Look at those tiny little button leaves with splashes on them. Like it has everything I want in a plant. But unfortunately, it's just not the happiest. I have repotted it to hopefully give it some more nutrients in the soil. But in general, it's just not the happiest plant. Like there's quite a few bits that are going soft and I've taken a lot off of this plant, unfortunately. It does still have one sort of dangly bit. And there is some new growth in there. It's like not stopped growing completely. So there is hope for it. I just, I think I need to be patient with it. Hopefully in time and with enough care and light, it will grow a bit better and like me more, please. <laughs> this here is another one that got a little bit affected by sunburn during the heat wave, just sitting in that window. I have removed, again, most of the leaves that are burnt, but there is still some in there, unfortunately. And I think it'll be okay. This is a Hoya croniana splash, not a super silver 
just a splash. You can see it's got a lot less variegation in its leaves than some of the other ones. And even at the bottom of the leaves, they're actually really unvariegated. So it's kind of just like a green form at this point, which is fine. I was hoping by putting it in a brighter spot, like by the window, it would gain some more variegation, but I don't think that has happened. It's just given it sunburn. Um, but like I said, I've pulled these away from the window for while I'm away and I'll put them back when I get back, but just be careful about when it's in the super hot sun because it won't like that that much. And then the final plant that's hanging is this Hoya Rosita. This is my current longest Hoya. You can see it's quite long and hanging down really nice. This one did really well in the sunshine. It didn't actually get burnt. Its leaves do look a tiny bit sun-stressed, but like I I think it's positive. I mean, I don't really mind that much sun stress on Hoyas. They just kind of go a bit pinky. But I really love these sort of black outlines these leaves have. Like, they're just so pretty. <laughs> and they, they kind of look like someone drew them. And I really like it. And this is my longest Hoya. And I'm really, really hoping that one day it'll flower. And I think maybe keeping it in the sun will hopefully stress it out enough to help it flower. Because I've heard stress helps Hoyas bloom which would be amazing but for the time being it's just going to be what it is and live its happy life in the window on this side we have another alcove again it has the same issue with the window oh hello it's 10 a.m grow lights have come on and again it's got the same problem with the window where the window's recessed and it's not getting very much light at all so this is the other corner i tested with the mother grow lights and i have rearranged a bit since because I, I'd been meaning to rearrange for a while, but I couldn't until I'd finished the grow light test. And honestly, the growth went really, really well. So this is my Monstera Thai Constellation, my favorite Monstera of all times. It is doing so, so well. I still can't believe that I grew this from a single leaf that had root rot. I think that is absolutely insane, but it has grown so well. This is the newest leaf on it. The leaf before was a little bit smaller, had one fenestration. This one's got one fenestration, but it's a lot bigger. And I just noticed this yesterday. The freaking leaf is pregnant! Ah! So I'm gonna get a new leaf. It's probably gonna come out while I'm away, which is kind of sad, but it'll be a nice surprise to come back to. So I think I will enjoy it. Next to it, I've got my Anthurium Clarinervium. Okay, Cleo. I'm gonna have to pause because Cleo's having a right fit right now. <laughs> Next to that, kind of behind it, I have one of my Monstera Albo Borsigianas. This is my more variegated one, and it just popped out this amazing leaf! It's like three quarters white, which is absolutely insane. Um, like, if you look down at the bottom, the white on the leaves, it was like one quarter white, and it just slowly gained more and more and more as it grew up until like half moons and then now three quarters and it's grown fenestrations again which makes me so freaking happy like for a while it stopped giving me fenestrations and i know the white parts go a bit brown on all the leaves i think that's just because of humidity it's not quite high enough here to support them and it's unfortunate because i can't really get it more humid right now it's currently at 66 percent in here and much higher than that and Joe gets kind of annoyed with me so I kind of have to keep it quite low but uh, it's okay it's still it's still very happy and I don't mind cutting off a little bit of the brown spots if I get some like gorgeous leaves out of it as well this is my philodendron dark lord which I just potted up from propagation it had like the weirdest growth thing on it it was growing downwards and at the bottom of the pot and so I've had to kind of repot it a bit funkily to try and get it to grow. But I've put it in a spot where the grow light is directly above it and like fairly close to it. So hopefully I can get that growth to right itself because right now it is a little bit weird. I used to have the Ficus Shiveriana in that pot on the stand, but I had to move it down in order to give that the better spot to get the light. I think this one's still perfectly fine here and it's still growing well. It's got a new leaf coming in, but... I can't believe how well this plant has done. 
literally in my care it's only produced these insane really bright leaves before my care it was kind of like this dark green and then after I got it it was just like boom 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 splashy here there that and I absolutely love it even the ones that have a bit more green in them I think they're absolutely stunning and they come in with this kind of like pinky yellow hue and they go quite cream when they mature it's just gorgeous I love that plant it's my favorite ficus for sure this is the other grow light as well that goes on for 12 hours a day so these plants are getting as much light as possible and I think they really like it. Again, I don't really show these shelves that are below the top shelf, but I do have a grow light on them to make sure that they're getting enough as well. It's not on for 12 hours a day, but it is on still. I think it goes on the evening for like maybe four or five hours. So I think that does help, but they're not getting as much as the ones at the top. Over here we have a scandapsis. I think this is the silver cloud. And oh my God, I love this plant so much. I just think its variegation is so beautiful. This leaf is like very long comparatively. I think they normally grow more like this. But I think mine's growing from a couple different growth points at the moment. And it's just very, very happy. And I love it. Below it, I have the Skindapsis Tattoo, I think. This is the one that was mislabeled. And so I'm still not 100% sure what it was or what it is. I think it's a tattoo because it looks like the tattoo in its like variegation it doesn't look like the silver hero which is what it was sold to me as but i'm still not 100 percent sure i hope it's a tattoo because those are expensive and really cool so either way i don't really mind what it is i just think it's really pretty so it doesn't really matter got a few syngoniums down here i think this is a syngonium pixie at the back i got that at the plant swap actually all of these i got at the plant swap this is a neon robusta in a very very small pot and then a frosted heart i think this one is definitely one of my favorite syngoniums like oh my goodness look at these leaves they're just so frosty and i love how you can still see the like dark veins in the frosty leaves this one's just living in perlite and it has been oh don't drop my plants don't drop all my plants please this one oh did i just snap that leaf i might have just snapped that leaf whoops I just pulled off this leaf, uh, but it's okay. It's still a perfectly beautiful plant and it's growing pretty well. It's just in perlite and it looks like it's rooting decently. I don't think those are rotting in there. I'd probably pull it out and pot it up at this point, but I'm not going to do it before I go on holiday. So I'll do it probably right after I go on holiday. You can see which side's been facing the front because it's got algae on the perlite, which is totally normal and fine. But I just, I think this syngonium is just so... Gorgeous. The leaves are so minty and like kind of speckled and I love it. Oh, look at that. Over here is more Marble Queen Pothos. These I'm actually going to be potting up into the one at the top when I repot that to make it a little bit of a fuller plant. But I wanted to put them in soil first just because I think I want to them to like get used to it before I put them into a bigger plant and they had to like compete for energy but it's growing really well just in my terrazzo pot which I really really like. At the back there those are some golden pothos cuttings just in some water. I'm not gonna pull them out just because they're pretty classic golden pothos nothing that exciting. And then down here I've got my Anthurium forgetii. It's leaf is going a bit weird but it does have a new one coming in they're very like cupped though. Um, I don't know if that's because it needs more water or what, but like this leaf is properly cupping. I'll have to do some research and figure out why that is, but I'm hoping that this leaf grows as big as this one has because I just, I love this plant. I love its sparkly veins and its leaves are a little bit smaller than the other anthuriums I have in my collection, but it's just still so beautiful and they're like a bit longer. I don't know, I really like it, and y'all know I love my little anthurium starburst sparkly bits at the like sort of base where they hit the stem. But yeah, it's just, it's fine. It's not my favorite anthurium in the world, but I really like it still, and I still think it looks pretty, and it's getting grow light, and that's all that matters. Just above it, I have a another Scandapsis. This is the Scandapsis Trubii Moonlight. I've had this one for ages now and it's growing like really long runners 
they just go down but I kind of just let it do as it likes. Um, again, I don't pay there very much attention to this one and it actually is totally fine with it. I still love its super silvery leaves and these ones are a bit leatherier than other Skindapsis's, Skindapsi. And it's still growing really well. Oh, it's got a leaf that's trapped inside another leaf there. Oopsies. Come on, baby. You can do it. Ha! Did it without snapping the leaf. That's really good. Yeah, really nice. And then I finally figured out where I wanted to keep my Stefania Erecta. Instead of on the window in the living room, I have it in the bedroom, getting some grow light throughout the day. It's a lot closer to the grow light, and since I filmed the other video, it has popped out these new leaves because they're like right up against the grow light. And so I think it's liking that a bit more, and I'm hoping it can continue to grow a bit more compact. But... Uh, I think it's fine. I think it's the right spot for it for now. Then this is the final section. I've actually turned my light box on so you can actually see these plants without it being too too dark because again this is a very very dark corner. It's darker than the other ones and to be honest I probably should put the grow light on more here just because it is so dark but I don't and that's okay. I do try and keep plants that can handle a little bit less light here but I've not done the best of that. Starting at the top, I have my Skindapsis Argureus. This was my first ever Skindapsis, and it's doing okay. It's a little bit thirsty right now. I watered it this morning, so hopefully it uncurls its leaves. And Skindapsis are great because when they get thirsty, they just get curly leaves, so it's really easy to tell when they need a drink, which is nice, which this one does. So I just gave it a little bit of water this morning. But this is, like I said, my first ever houseplant, and I'm just so proud for being able to keep it alive for, I suppose, nearly four or five years now, which is pretty good. I'm pretty proud of it. Next to it is my String of Hearts Silver Glory that I just potted the props in, and it looks so much better now. It is so full and generally a lot nicer than the four strands that it had before, but... I am really, really, really loving it. I love the like silvery leaves. Y'all know I love a blue silver leaf and it just, I'm so excited to watch it grow really full. I think this is one of my favorite or my favorite string of hearts at the minute. And it's got new growth down at the bottom too. So it is very happy. And I think it also likes having the grow light on. To be honest, I should just probably put the grow light on. I think that's the answer here. Got a Sansevieria Zelenica and this one is one of my newer-ish plants as well. It's from Hutch Houseplants and I got it because I really liked how it interacts with the other plants up here. And I love how tiny it is. It is my smallest or one of my smallest Sansevieria and I just think it's really pretty. The coloring is nice. I love the dark green on light green stripes it has and it's nice and pointy which is always fun. Got a varicosum on one of my lazy poles up there. It's doing pretty well. Its leaf size has increased since I got it. You can tell down there, that's the old leaf. And then that up there is the new leaf. And I think it's doing well. It's also just produced a new one back there. That sort of traditional red back of the varicosum, which is really, really lovely. I'm not sure exactly which type of varicosum it is, but I don't mind. I just really like their velvety leaves and I just think they're pretty. I very recently put this Monstera Peru up here. It's in my skull pot. I used to have a golden pothos here, but I ended up giving that away because I have, as you've seen, two other golden pothos in this room. So I wanted to give this one a little bit more care, a bit more of a prominent spot in my life which is exciting and I think it's really liking being here so far. I kind of want to put it on a pole. I probably will eventually, but for now I'm going to leave it here, which is fine. But I like the like blobbly leaves. They're kind of like, they're just, they're kind of like bubble wrap in a weird way. And yeah, it's been doing okay. It's not been like the center of my attention very much lately. So I've kind of let it get a little bit unhappy but it does have a new leaf where is that one? Oh, yeah this is the new leaf up here this has recently popped out so 
It's obviously happy enough, but I would like it to be more happy. And it's got a little golden frog on it. One of my little charms. On the shelf below it, I've got some more Skindapsis Silver Anne props. I think these ones are from my plant, and they're just chilling in water. Nothing special, but I'm... I think they're rooting. Yeah, there's some roots in there. It's definitely got something. It, so those will probably be ready to pot up sometime fairly soon, but I'm gonna leave them for now. They're just trailing along down there. This is the Croniana Super Silver in my little mini bust pot. I love this Hoya so, so much. I think its leaves are so beautiful. They're like literal super silver leaves kind of inverse of the other ones where they're like mostly silver with green splashes instead of mostly green with silver splashes. This one again has grown quite well for me. It's again not in the brightest of spots. This isn't the brightest location but it seems to be happy enough and it is still growing here so I can't complain. This is a I think Ripsalis red coral. I think they go red if they get a bit sun stressed but it's definitely not gonna get sun stressed here. I got this as a cutting I think around Christmas time and it has grown pretty well since. It's got a good amount of growth in there, nothing crazy, but I'm surprised it's doing so well in such low light. It's been here basically since I got it, not anything brighter and I think it's doing okay. I think it kind of likes being a bit more humid as well. It's one of the more humidity liking cactuses. I'm not positive on that. I'm still learning how to take care of this one, but it's not dead yet. So that's all I can ask for really. And then last but not least for this room is my lovely Philodendron Gloriosum. This spot is definitely not bright enough for it, unfortunately, but it's kind of the only place it'll fit. It's in a massive trough with pond, so it, it just really can't go anywhere else right now. I don't have that much like counter space for it. But I think it looks okay here and it does fill the space nicely. It's just growing a little bit slower than it would in a bit of a brighter spot. You can see there is a new leaf popping in up there. But I love how this one just crawls on top of the pond. I think it looks really cool and it grows so differently to so many of my other philodendrons. Because most of them like to climb but this one likes to crawl. I have tied them up at the top here because they were getting a bit spread out and kind of getting in the way of the function of this table. And so I think that's fine. As long as it's not too tight, it should be okay. But I still think it looks really pretty. And I love this plant so much. My beautiful Velvet Gloriosum. So that is it. Those are all of the houseplants I keep in my bedroom. As you can see, I've got a frick ton in here. Next week, at your request, I am going to be taking you inside of my prop boxes and my acclimation box. I didn't show you all what was inside those boxes in my office tour because there's quite a lot of plants in them and I could talk about them for ages, so I'm going to be showing those to you next week and that will be the final episode of my houseplant tour. Thank you all so, so much for joining me on my summer 2022 houseplant tour. I really, really hope you enjoyed all these videos. I really enjoyed sharing all of my plants with you and letting you see each and everything that I have in my collection. It's gotten quite big, hasn't it? <laughs> it's very much so filling the flat. If you haven't watched the other videos in this series, they are down below in the description linked, so go have a look at those. If you have, thank you so much for going with me on this journey throughout my flat. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you all enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about. Are there any houseplants in this tour that I've not talked about that you want me to talk about in the future? Let me know down below in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.